it's Friday PM, it's a Friday night. Uh, very glad you guys are all tuning in tonight. We got a very special show tonight. We've got Will Bradford from the band Sea Peoples. He's gonna play us a couple songs. Uh, he's also gonna talk to us a little bit about the Army Fest coming up. Uh, it's a great uh, outdoor festival. We're gonna learn a lot more about that, uh, as well as just a lot of other things. Then in the second hour, we're gonna have Quindell Smalls. He's gonna do a couple songs for us uh, and talk a little bit as well. A friend of his uh, named Delilah is here. So we're gonna have a great time. We're gonna have a couple surprises, some interesting other things as well. But without further ado, let's get right to Will playing a couple songs for us. Uh, that's what we're all here for, so stick with us. Thanks.
Oh 
going to sit down and chat a little bit with Will. I don't know which camera I'm going to. Uh, thank you again. I appreciate it. We'll be right back. Thanks. Said the boss to his senior VP, I want you to listen to me. I mean it, no joke. This new part's a smoke with a smooth taste. I know you'll agree. Oh, smoother new port, fresher new port, smoother, more refreshing cigarette. Then up spoke the senior VP. I'm afraid that I don't quite agree. I've got to confess, the one I like best is Newport 100s, you see. Oh, smoother Newport, fresher Newport, smoother, more refreshing cigarette. So they looked for a third employee and asked him to please referee. He tried one of each and then gave this speech. Both Newports taste smooth as can be. Oh, Choose a new port, either new port, smoother, more refreshing cigarette. Come to Newport, a smoother, more refreshing cigarette. occurrences of day-to-day -day living, one thing stands out as a completely unique experience. Colt 45 Malt Liquor. Charles, six more false staff, please. Totally new beer with a great new taste. Lucky genuine draft beer. A totally new beer with a taste that's light, smooth, and remarkably non-filling. Try it. worthwhile to go just a little bit out of their way to get certified lead-free Amoco gasoline. You expect more from American and you get it. The American Oil Company. Now, discover an exciting new world of smoking pleasure. Forget every care. Relax. 
relics and enjoy a truly different cigarette. Air Clean Tobacco, you've never had a cleaner smoke. Light menthol flavor, you've never enjoyed a fresher taste. The most exciting taste in cigarette history. Deep set recessed filter, set deep to let you smoke clean. So relax. Breathe easy, smoke clean with new Bel Air. Yes, breathe. Hey everybody, we're back here. It's Friday p.m. Uh, we just heard a couple songs from Will. Uh, those were songs that I actually heard before. I actually did some editing with them. Was it Ship Sink was one of yeah, them, right? Yeah. That's a great one. Um, so let's talk a little bit about kind of your journey to, to getting here to this table with me. Yeah. Uh, so you were born not in Maine. Weren't you born in New York? Or area? New York yeah. City. New York yeah. City, okay. Yeah. So uh, what was growing up in New York like? Was that kind oh, of? Oh, I wasn't there for very long. Right, right. I, you know, I, I grew up all over the place. Um, I did spend like formative years in Bangor, Maine for a while. So that, I feel like I'm, not, I'm like kind of a Mainer for having so was, lived there for yeah, a yeah. period of time, quite frankly. But you, you bounced around. Was your family in the military no, or something? No, no. Um, yeah, I don't know why we bounced around so yeah, much. To be <laughs> totally honest, right, yeah, right. I don't, uh, my mom's Thai, so I'm, I'm half uh, uh, Asian, you know. Right. So, you know, and then the Bradford other, other side countries. is the other side, which sounds kind yeah, of yuppie, not, not, right? Not Asian. Not Asian, not Asian exactly. Side, yeah. <laughs> so, like, when did you pick up the guitar? Was music always something in your household? Was this an early thing that you got into, or...? Um, no, honestly, back when I was a kid, I was all about sports. Yeah, okay. I could see that. 100%. And then, uh, I think I stopped growing in seventh grade. Right. And the dream just died every year after. I had a friend of mine, yeah, he's the tallest guy because you maybe grew early, you're saying, right, yeah. yeah. And so you were towering over everybody, and then all of a sudden they shot up past you. Way, way past me. But was the sport that you wanted to do basketball? One of them, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I played football, I played baseball too. Um, I played all the sports. And, uh, I, I don't know, um, you know, I guess I probably uh, started misbehaving in high school, too, and misbehaving in music seemed to go hand in hand. hand, in hand. Well, I was going to say, it's, it's, it's about that age that you discover that girls like a guy who plays music, <laughs> and it's probably more long-lasting than sports, because all these sports guys get all dinged up. And music, you can it's keep true. doing that. It's, it's fleeting. <laughs> right, it's fleeting to be in sports. <laughs> So you, you get to Maine. Um, I mean, we talked a little bit about uh, before, like Sea Peoples has been around for a long time. Yeah. Um, at, at one article I read, it said that uh, you guys have had like 32 band members at one time. or Yeah. 35. I 35. Think. Okay. But you've been there since the beginning. I'm the only, I am technically the only one. Left. Yeah. Yep. Only member. Um, the current members, Dan and Ian, who you know, uh, they've been with me since 2014, so. We're almost 10 years in, so it's, uh, yeah, you know. The, the band's 23 years old, so it's, yeah. you know, that's when you're when you're on the road a lot, not everybody's cut out for that kind of life, you know. Well, that was what I was going to ask, was that uh, you're a, a touring band. You guys are out touring a lot. I mean, yeah. I've known you for about a year. It seems like most of the time you're out on the road. Yeah, a lot, yeah. And, and uh, do you guys book, though? Do you have a booking agent? Do you yeah, book we yourself? Yeah, agents. Um, we, we're kind of in-house now um we've had many agents over the years right. you know, <laughs> agents are their own breed of interesting yes people, you know agents are kind of the same i think regardless of what industry you're in um but uh but yeah it's uh it's tough out there right now though it's tough to be a band in today's, today's well sport. that's a question that i had for you about like um over the years though because i talked to the bumbling woohas yeah. and you know them pretty yeah. well and they go out and they tour around yeah. a lot and I think the questions I was asking, after a while, you find your groove, right? You find places that you have an audience yeah, there and in certain cities and things like that. Yeah, yeah, that's the best part about it is you get to play and do perform your art um, to different ears or different eyes, depending on whatever, you're, you're, whatever you do. Um, and that's kind of where you, you sort of get better at what you do because uh, you sort of see what works uh, night to night with a different, different audience, different type of vibe. Uh, Dare I say different cultures sometimes, cultures different sometimes. politics right. even on occasion, you know. But uh, but yeah. So uh, um, I actually saw George Carlin once. Yeah. Uh, and he used to do. I got lucky. I saw him in Binghamton, New York, where he used to do his practice gigs. 
And uh, he figured if it went over there, because they voted against half his jokes anyway, so like if it went over there, it was going to go over fine on over, HBO. Right. So it was like a two-and-a-half-hour show, which, could, of course, whittled down to an hour. But same, and same thing. <laughs> do you find that in that way that uh, you have to be a chameleon a little bit at times? or You know, I think... Probably when it first started out, but you're right. You find your groove. Find your groove. And right. eventually, when you find people that are act- that that actually start to support your your career and start paying to see you multiple times. I mean, at this point, I've probably got thousands of dollars off some of my buddies over the years. Yeah. Um, no, I get changes, and they they're definitely coming to see you do exactly what do what you do. I do. But I mean, because it's it is kind of an interesting thing. I I just uh, was cultivating some of your videos for a video show we're doing tomorrow night. Watch that show, Saturday Night Special. It's going to be a lot of like 99% videos from the, the Army group that's going to be this festival. And I will remind my director, we'll play that in a minute, uh, some of the posters you sent me. Uh, but the festival is this summer. It's August 4th and 5th. Yep. Uh, and what town is that going to be in? We're going to circle it's back to Sears this. Sears-Mont, Maine, which is basically Belfast. Okay, Belfast. Um, yep. It's, uh, so, so what I was saying was that... Uh, uh, some of your videos, they are have some overt poli- politics to them, <laughs> but but I don't I wouldn't say that you guys wear your politics all the time as a touring band like on your sleeve. Yeah. So that's where you can play a lot of different venues. It's not. I lived in the South. We tour. Yeah. We tour regularly through yeah, all yeah, of yeah. those places. Fit, fit in with everybody. Yeah. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit about the Army Festival because if we get a chance, if you have that, we'll we'll show that. Upcoming events, as I think uh, really soon as The Worst is playing. And my other band, The Worst, uh, is playing April 22nd at Sun Tiki Studios. Sun Tiki Studios. With the Bumbling Woo House and Milk Street, which Milk is a Street. great band. And then there's another band called Rosemary, which is a, a really young, young, young band, actually. Young, young, Fantastic, young. though. They're great. And so then I also have, and we might have played it already because it's on a loop, uh, the Sea People show, we yeah. just showed a poster for that. That's in May, I thought, or something? That's May 6th. May 6th. At, also at Suntiki. Yeah, it's, uh, you've had Whitney Walker. It's, he's releasing yeah. his record, if he's, if he's on there. And then Brooks, Brooks playing solo show. So. And then Brooks playing a solo. Yeah. And then the third part is the Army Festival, uh, which is, let's talk about that now, because I think we could talk about that forever. Because So Army Festival, this is the second year. But, it, I mean, the question for me is how you build a music festival from the ground up. And part of it is because you also kind of work with bands more than your own, in a sense. I mean, you're, you, yeah. you have a group. I mean, you don't mind me saying no, that. No, yeah, right? I mean, I run, the, yeah, I run, I, I run two record labels. Um, the one is, is called Rascals Records, which does all the Sea Peoples and the Worst. And uh, uh, Whitney Walker's stuff, he's our first not my band are act even though we're we're all, we all sort of made the record together um and then uh essentially army group is you know basically me and uh, essentially sparksy is a huge huge part of that she helps me run our our 501c3 501c3 that yes right. that's yeah, right yeah. Some uh, right a charity nonprofit which is called communities records which that's is right some sparksy and i started during covid um also on the army fest of course and it's another band I play in these days, too. So I guess I'm in three bands now. <laughs> you got different things, right? Yeah, busy things. Well, so I, remind me, I would like to talk to you about this charity. But so uh, you got a group, and that's half the battle, right? Getting all these musicians together. Musicians are – I've been dealing with a lot of musicians by having this TV show. Musicians are a handful, <laughs> Sorry. right? Well, they're <laughs> artists. Um, but we're all artists. But uh, So you get this group, and uh, – Am I right to say this is also around the time of your birthday? Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my 27th birthday. Right, yes, of right, course. right, just yes. like mine. It has. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, you get to see, it's in Sears Mont. Is that correct? Sears Mont is basically off Route 3. Um, yeah, it's probably like, I guess, 35 minutes from Augusta, too. So it's, it's pretty centrally located, right next to the beach, too. So it's like 15 minutes right. to Lincolnville Beach. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know. I think camping costs more in that neighborhood, actually. In that neighborhood, but <laughs> yeah, just to camp somewhere. But let's let's tell people because the one thing that's very interesting is this is. Uh, I mean, I keep trying to say the reuniting, but they never really broke up. But a, 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 a once in a blue moon a chance and to see then, rustic overtones yeah. together. 
They There's something I mean, they special about it. They haven't played it. in years. I would call it a reunion. At right. This well, point. Dave, I mean, D- Dave didn't want me to call yeah, it a reunion. Yeah, he yeah, said, yeah. "Well, it's no, no we didn't no break reunion. up." Yeah. Uh, but it is. It's it's a special occasion to see those guys. Uh, I I consider you to be the co-headliner uh, as well. Oh, I don't know about that on okay. that one. I think I think for for. Um, I mean, at this point too, it, it, all, there's so many great, so many great, so many great artists on that, um, and I uh, feel like super lucky to let alone know them, let alone know, you know to let alone have them yeah, play. Yeah, it's, that's what. It well, means. so let's go to the nuts and bolts because you have a few minutes, right? Yeah. Uh, the nuts and bolts of what goes into uh, putting this festival together. So if I'm the guy who's watching this at home, I'm going to be seeing that poster. He might run it again in a second. Um, that tells you where to go, who's in it. You can buy the tickets on Eventbrite. Are we talking about, because I would go to Lollapalooza a lot when I lived in Chicago, so you can buy like a one-day pass, a two-day pass? How does that? So we kind of didn't do it that way because this year, it's it's honestly just so affordable. It's yeah, like it's right. Really it's not, cheap. right, right, right. Okay. Um, and the Friday is probably half the amount of acts as Saturday. Yeah, Saturday is certainly a longer day, I will say. Friday is going to be an awesome day, the worst, and Vapors of Morphine, which is Dana from Morphine are, are playing that night um, with uh, Mouth Washington, I believe. I don't have the schedule in my head, but so both nights are going to be fantastic. Um, and then you got Mozart uh, and uh, Graphic Melee doing the, oh, oh, I forget which, who's doing Friday and who's doing Saturday, but essentially DJing into DJing, the night. That's right. Okay. So that will be pretty fun. So it's a Friday and a Saturday. So yeah. if you're going there, like what, what would you want to do if you're the person I mean, are there people you think that are just going to come up from Portland and then just drive home? Last year, we had plenty of people that just camped. I mean, the nice thing, the camping is included. And, yeah. And, and it's 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 basically on site at the venue, so you can camp next to your car. Right. And once you get your bracelet, you can come and go. You are not stuck there. So, you know, if you want to take a little day trip, there's lakes close by. And then you got, you know, Lincolnville, Camden, and, and Belfast. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. when I first played there, I was like, wow, this place is pretty special. Um, and then they, they're a great brewery. I mean, Thresher's uh, Brewery is really So a, then that's a good, good follow-up yeah. question for me. How how did you find uh, – you're telling me it's a brewery? That's they, what they, did, they did a Sea People's Beer, which actually, now that I remember, is actually coming out again this summer. But they did a, a, a Sea People's Beer last year. Two years ago. Uh, it was a Kolsch called Shangri-La. And that's, how, that's essentially when we started – I just went up there and played a couple times, you know. Um, I don't I don't run to rural America that often, to right, be totally right, honest right, yeah. with you. So right, it right. took me a minute, but I, 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 from the first time I played there, I was like, wow, this place is actually really special. Um, and uh, it's it's one of those uh, dog friendly. Bring your dog. Bring your dog. Oh yeah, yeah. it is. It's a it's a cool spot. So um, for the people, every everyone up there already knows that it's a you know it's a, a, a awesome spot. But uh, I think people from Portland and, and around are starting to kind of get hip to the fact that you can essentially go to a show and then you don't need to leave you know you can uh you know and they have pretty they've got nice facilities uh, indoor and outdoor bathrooms and all that sort of stuff so so if, if you want to party and everything you're not kind yeah, of in this crash crazy shouldn't city. leave <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's right and that that makes a big difference so uh who how does that like the logistics of it come up are you guys putting up the stage as the brewery how does so that work? this this year we i've Partnered with Santiki, yeah, yeah. Um, so okay. t- uh, essentially Santiki is is uh, is the production sponsor and the overall sponsor really. And, and at this point, um, I mean, last year it was it was a blast, and and uh, it was it was still relatively small. And then, and then once I had talked to Dave and realized that he was actually considering doing Rustic, which at the time, it's been, like I said, it's been a few years, so I guess it's not reuniting, but it's been a while. And uh, so once I realized that we sort of had that happening up there then uh yeah ian uh, uh ian partnered with uh, us and land race land race cannabis can i say it so, we're yeah yeah this is a pg network right that's right uh land race cannabis uh, yeah, yeah. is also okay. sponsoring it and right. um punky's mixtape is sponsoring it so we, we ended up getting a, a a nice little well group army together i suppose if you will pun intended yeah i mean the, i mean nowadays cannabis is huge it's like Right here on Congress Street, it's every other store. I, I feel like it's going to hit its, it'll peak out, I think. Because, I mean, it, there's, it, I think everybody who's going to smoke weed is doing it. I, I think it's, I think it'll drop a little bit. I, I just, I mean, I think it's, 
Business-wise, I think it's saturated. Portland yeah. seems to be 100 many cannabis places. But somebody told me every cannabis place is different, that they sell different cannabis. I would assume it. I used to smoke. I can't do it anymore. I get too paranoid. Yeah. If I was smoking right now, I'd be sweating <laughs> and panicking. But the, uh, I mean, that's being up on any kind of thing. So um, let's talk about that, uh, the charity. So yeah. that is an interesting thing. Tell me more about that. Yeah, um, Sparksy, who I think you've had on this or the other show that you had, uh, yep. um, she and I started Communities Records, which is Communities but with YZ. Okay. Um, it's a, a, a nonprofit, essentially uh, trying to save the world, one artist, one song, and one community at a time. Interesting. Um, okay. So we, uh, the worst, technically did the first release and raised money for Maine Transnet. This was a couple years ago. And then uh, during COVID, um, my buddy Tim Reynolds, who's uh, Dave Matthews Band, um, Tim's a good buddy of mine, played, played uh, toured with him tons over the years. And uh, he uh, got him to do a, a track for um, a Charlottesville charity called uh, FAR, um, which essentially is a housing charity um, run by Section 8 housing residents in Charlottesville, uh, Virginia. Okay. And um, yeah, Nikki Glaspie, who's a other friend of mine, Beyonce's drummer, ended up collabing on the track. And the people should definitely go check it out. It's called Guardian Angels. You can still support the charity. They're awesome, awesome people. Um, in Charlottesville, uh, Charlottesville, Virginia, and it ended up being a great experience because Charles uh, Sparksy and I went down there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, while we were there, uh, we actually were there to film the video with Tim, but uh, we just happened to land when they took the statues down. So we were actually getting coffee, and they came around, around the corner. We were like, they're taking the Confederate statues down yeah, right yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, right. And so uh, we walked up like half a block, and we ended up getting the whole thing on film, and I got to witness history, which was pretty... Uh, kind of like point at it. It was, yeah, I mean, they did it, obviously, they did it incognito. They did, they weren't trying to announce it because of, you know, the the, uh, the person who had died the, the year before and the tragedy and everything. That That's they right. So they right. were trying to keep it on the DL. Actually, I think Robert E. Lee got taken down in the middle of the night, if I remember correctly. So we caught Stonewall Jack Jackson's removal from the center well, of Charlottesville. <laughs> We're like, we're live tonight, so it could be like people in New York right now over Trump getting arrested. They could be riding. We don't know. It's possible. It's always possible, <laughs> right? There's always, it's always on, uh, like, right on the edge of everything. And that's why we try to do the show live so that we can be talking about whatever's the newest thing. But um, do you have new albums coming out you want to talk about? Yeah, some of course. Things? Um, actually, the next, the next big record um, that is coming out is definitely the Sparksy record, which yep. we've been uh, working on forever. <laughs> um, she just dropped a new single that actually had Tim on it. Um, she made Tim's video, too, so that's yeah. a, definitely check that out. But um, So, uh, yeah, her, uh, her record is, is essentially some of the stuff starts to drop after this summer. Um, and then uh, See Peoples and the Worst are back in the studio right now. Doing some stuff with Mr. Gutter uh, right now. Doing a track with Angelica Ferre, which is probably going to yeah. drop in a few months as She's well. Great. So, yeah, I've been busy. So, uh, do you guys record at the uh, the Cadia studio? Is that where you're at? or uh, Sometimes? Actually, or? I, I, I record all of the stuff at this place called Chill House Studios in Chill Boston, House? which has okay. been sort of where I work uh, out of, have been working uh, with Will Hall in there since... 2002. Yeah, okay. See people started in Boston. That's, that's really so, uh, I know you're short on time, um, <laughs> but I, well, I, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about kind of like, you know, the, the music scene in, in New England, I mean, specifically in Maine. Um, what's the, you know, the, from the 20,000 feet up, I mean, it's, it seems like there's some really great venues here, unbelievable artists, um, is there any missing pieces? I mean, has, has Hollywood <laughs> or the music industry not gotten here where everybody's kind of independent? Does that matter? I don't think it matters yeah. anymore, okay. honestly. Um, I, I, I could be wrong about that. Well, but uh, but in my experience, I mean, at this point, even see people started in Boston. Some people still think of us as Boston. We were based in Asheville, North Carolina for 10 years. Some people still think we're based there. I Asheville, haven't lived there yeah. since <laughs> right. in nine years. So um, it really, it doesn't really, especially with social media and everything, it, it's not really the same as it used it to be. It was an interesting conversation I had with Dave Gutter about, I mean, it seems like they had that album 
uh, you know, I don't even, it was Clive, Clive Davis. Yeah. Was that a, Atlantic Records? Was that it what was you were Arista. That was I was going to say Arista. His label, yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, it sounds to me like. Arista, sorry. It, I mean, he had a lot to say about it. And, and uh, it does seem like they kind of take most of your money and maybe they'll help you, maybe they won't. Um, there's got to be a better way. Uh, and I, it seems like that's kind of more of the grassroots, right? Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it, I, not it's, moving to it's LA. Tough. I mean, not, I, yeah. I've been doing it so long. So with, with a band like See Peoples, just out of the fact that we're like 23 years into yeah. touring, we've probably played every city at this point 20 to 50 times. 20 to 50. So <laughs> right. we always have a place to go back to. We always have a place to play. Being a new band, yeah, and, and even like the worst is 2016, but the reality of the worst was that we kind of hit the ground running because it was already, you know, Brooks a long time season that too. She was a season yep. five, yeah. So, um, it's really hard to be a new artist, it's, um, and uh, it does. It's, it's. I'd say it's. Unfortunately, the music industry may be tougher than it's ever been before. For sure. Is that because it's just harder to get the time in at places? Like I talk to some of these younger bands, and they're like, I mean, especially in Maine. Is the question that I have with that is that's interesting. Is is I mean, I think. There's this double-edged sword, I think. I'm always looking at the camera here, but I've gotten so used to that. It's Pavlovian. But the, uh, that, Am I supposed to do that? No, nah, I don't know if you want to do that as much. That's your camera. Oh, that's there, mine. Actually. Okay. Yeah, the red that's, light's on you. you. Um, but the, it seems like with, and this is why I am actually have a, and I'll probably talk about this later on tonight, is my thoughts on this uh, film tax credit. I, at first, as a filmmaker, I was very excited about it. I was like, oh, this is going to be great for all of us. More and more, I'm like, you know what? I don't know if the, Hollywood's going to come in here, treat us badly, and then leave, right? So it's like, they, I don't see that it's really going to benefit us local folks. And the question is, is that with this kind of influx of all this tourism here in Portland, it's got to be harder and harder to get a spot as a musician who's playing original music, you're younger, when they say, well, we'd rather get these guys to play Jimmy Buffett all night. Or, or this, there's that. Places, is that though. There's I mean, places, though. You know, around, you just, if, if you play a place that wants Jimmy Buffett, then, you know, it, it's a little <laughs> on you, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, Qualify, I like, there's always places. I think a lot of what, what, what there is a plus about being up tucked in this corner of the country, um, and, a, and a lot of new artists will sort of realize this when they do their first West Coast tours, but when, there's a lot of cities really close by. So there may not be necessarily lots of places within those cities, but every city has a place. They all all have a community. There's, there's a community there for every kind of music. You just got to find it. Um, and luckily here, most of those cities are a couple hours away versus other parts of the country and world are much farther away. So I always tell, you know, when anyone knew, I'm like, you, you live in a place where you can drive two, three hours and be in a completely different place um, to know. get to like a Bangor or Augusta yeah, anywhere, to play out in uh, different places. Yeah. <laughs> anywhere. There's well, no. do you, is there kind of any advice you have for the younger artists? Just keep practicing, try to do your <laughs> own. I mean, right. Maybe do your own. Uh, I don't think demos. any of these kids right. ever even know the meaning of that. <laughs> well, I, I, the, the interesting thing that I always find is, is the, the different styles of music and is it, as it's starting out, is it is it easy to be a rock band with this? No, probably no. not. Yeah, right. I it's mean, you know, it's you're a band, so you're coming together. Yeah. If if it goes right, so you, you know, you got help. You, you want to look at that, one. right? Yeah. Um, but then when things are annoying or irritating or not yeah. going, so yeah. then it's just. So worse, sometimes it's right? easier to be like a solo artist. Yeah, a absolutely. lot of times, right, right, right. right. The higher the band to play or something like that, yeah. do it the same as that. Prou- there's benefits to both. There's upsides and downsides. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, I really appreciate you stopping yeah, by so here. So happy, um, did you have any other things that you wanted to promote? I know we got a couple things out there. Um, social media, the best way that people can find you. Yeah. Rascal Records. I mean, you know? gosh, the Rascals, yeah. I mean, there's so many of them. Right, <laughs> right. Um, Will Bradford. I mean, yeah, that's actually you, probably the worst. I'm thinking that's yeah, the worst. Way, way, way. Uh, well, <laughs> Army Group. That is a, yeah, the uh, Army Group, uh, the worst. The um, worst. There's a bunch sea, of different. Sea yeah. People. Sea People's. Spark uh, Sea. Spark Sea. Communities Records. Community yeah. Records. Yeah. Uh, they're Angelica you work with. She yep. was on our show yeah, at Santiki. Yep. She is great. And Whitney Walker is Whitney. definitely. We just released his record, and it's a great record, by the way. So if you haven't if you haven't checked out Whitney's new record, it's a yeah. great record. Yeah, absolutely. It, it really yeah, cool it's sound. A lot of press too. It's like, it's and then uh, Bumbling Woohaws are always kind of circling yeah, around absolutely. with you guys. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a few other people. Yeah, there's a couple. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Miles <laughs> Cohen was with you guys. Um, but look for all of these guys at the Army Festival. I want to thank Will very much. Uh, we're going to take a commercial right now. We come back. We're going to hear from Quindell Smalls, who's out there. Hey, Quindell, good hey. to see you, brother. Uh, he's going to do a couple songs for us, and then we're going to sit down and talk to him. Stick with us. Thanks. <laughs> think it's quite worthwhile to go just a little bit out of their way to get certified lead-free Amoco gasoline. You expect more from American, and you get it. The American Oil Company. These are America's favorite used cars, from the 64 Stingray to the 59 Impala. And right now you'll find plenty of them. Slick 62s, gorgeous 63s, spectacular 64s, waiting at your Chevrolet dealer. Most people. 
people who are interested in the Corvair. You want to know what it can do in action, out on the road. You want proof that the Corvair can deliver the goods, give you more of what you're looking for in a compact car. And here it is, dramatic proof that the Corvair delivers the goods as no other compact car can. Years ago, in its early development stages, Chevrolet engineers began testing disguised Corvairs, began making the Corvair a road car. They made it a compact car with power, traction, and ruggedness. They put into the Corvair a suspension system to tackle the roughest road and level it off for its passengers. Chevrolet designers and engineers used all their know-how to make this 1960 Corvair the compact car that people could count on. But they didn't stop there. There was more testing, double-checking, retesting. Here at the challenging Lime Rock, Connecticut Raceway, the 1960 Corvair was really put through its paces, made to prove itself. And it did. It proved its stability, and then some. Just watch how the Corvair stays under control in this situation. Now see how the Corvair proved its maneuverability and ease of handling. I'm going to leave that to you since you go again uh, I want to thank Will Bradford for coming down here that was awesome uh, be sure to check out and buy tickets for the Army Fest uh, it's August 4th and 5th it's gonna be a great time uh, I'll talk to Quindell a little more about what he's up to but right now let's hear from Quindell doing a couple songs for you uh, we're excited about it take it away Quindell thank let's you so y'all thank you thank you for having me let's rock out This song is, this song's called Complicated. Let's do it. Turn it up, Kira. Cause it's complicated, but I'm gonna keep on grinding cause I'm gonna make it. People tell me that they love me, but I know they faking. I got dreams, I got goals, I got aspirations, and I'm gonna chase it because it's complicated. Trying to change people's lives, being famous. Now people call me their cousin and we not related. Oh yeah, I'm talking back dudes, I ain't missed a payment. They got this all mistaken, yeah. I knew that I would be right here. I did. So I held it down. Check. Hey, yo, this is for my city. I've been praying daily, but the devil, he been busy. Thinking about my brothers, I done lost way too many. Rotors on my shoulders feel like everyone against me. I gotta keep a strizzy. Really used to pedal through the snow on a 10 speed. So I could buy some clothes so the girls wouldn't diss me. <laughs> long time ago these days i'm knocking them down like dominoes head game on the road yeah people really gonna let you down when you getting money all the women love you now and when the tables turn ain't nobody around you asking where's the love and you're not gonna hear a sound they made me disappear like a magic trick then they tried to bust a ue i ain't having it you see the bounce back game oh yeah i mastered it people only got your back when they stabbing it it's complicated but I'm gonna keep on grinding cause I'm gonna make it. People tell me that they love me, but I know they fake it. And I got dreams, I got goals, I got aspirations. And I'm gonna chase it because it's complicated. Trying to change people's lives, keep being famous. Now people call me their cousin and we not related. But I'm talking back dudes, I ain't miss a payment. They got this all mistaken, yeah. I knew that I would be right, right here, sis. For my sister, y'all. Check. Ever doubt the talent, I'ma always prove you wrong. Straight about the mud at the top where I belong. I made some mistakes, I can count them all. But if you sleeping on me, then I'ma let you snow. Everything that I've been through, nothing wasn't simple. The pain I survived, the scars is all mental. You ain't focused on your bag, that you will continue. Everything I say official, heart colder than an igloo. Smalls live a darn life. I be sipping, reminiscing on my calm nights. I be dressed like every day is a prom night. But we started in the back and skipped a long line. We gonna be all right. I'm yelling more life. I hope my family and my friends live a long life. I was stabbed in the back with a long knife. Now I'm dripping VVS with false bright. Wearing off white because it's complicated. 
But I'm gonna keep on grinding cause I'm gonna make it People tell me that they love me but I know they fake it And I got dreams, I got goals, I got aspirations And I'm gonna chase it because it's complicated I'm trying to change people's life, being famous Now people call me their cousin and we not related Oh yeah, I'm talking back dudes, I ain't missing payment They got it all mistaken, yeah Most definitely I always manifested this moment to be right here with y'all, so thank you for having me. Dedicate to my sister, Ashanti. I love you, Ma. I love you. You know I do it for. Let's get it. Yeah. So that one was called Complicated, y'all. That's coming up. That's that's fresh off. Shout out to Beyond the Mic. Shout out to Bars Over Bars. They always say we got to do music without vocals, so I did that to my man. My brother, you know it. Lee, what's up? She, what's up? Next record, something from the heart, y'all. So we're going to dive in a little deeper. Um, blessings to everybody, the crew, Ouija, sis, you know it, my baby right there, my son with me. Let's rock out. Next one, let's do it. Praying for my family, I pray for the ones that love me. Had it all wrong, I was too obsessed with the money. Took too many L's and betrayal, I think of bags and buddy. If I give you my heart, I swear you lucky. And if I ever needed it back, don't hold it from me. Cause look, I'm feeling anxious lately. I've been complacent, I needed Buka to heal. That too much stuff is the strangest. Tell me that I changed because my spirit awakened. When I was in the hot seat, I never pointed no fingers. Never taught the hills, so we just resort to anger. Son in foster care, his mother put him in danger. Am I playing too much? Probably would have been rich if I wasn't playing so much. I don't know, I survived some of the craziest stuff. I know God is involved, but I ain't praying so much. People all around me, but they really wasn't with me. Yeah, be the ones you love the most. Be the ones that do you filthy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's love? Don't want to try no more. Every night for my back, man, I cry some more. Man, I keep my head high cause my eyes on the score. Man, I do this for the nights that we step on the floor. People tell tales, but the money speak for itself. When you taking care of others, just don't forget yourself. God forbid something happen, people never help. To learn to save instead of buying designer belts. Used to put it in Pyrex and watch the powder melt. I went legit, the feds came, this is how I felt. Took a look in the mirror, I stayed true to self. And didn't question God and wonder how the cars were dealt. Check. I'm very blessed for my outcome. People took the stand, grand jury didn't doubt them. Somehow they put me in the middle like Malcolm. Threw me in a hole, I just worked on my album. I'm immortal, I'm just trying to keep it cordial. Move like I disappeared through a transparent portal. Nah, turned off by the life that they on to. Tried to keep my distance from distractions that they drawn to. Really wasn't with me, nah. It be the ones you love the most, be the ones that do you filthy, yeah. Uh, forget love, don't want to try no more Every night from my back, man, I cry some more Keep my head high, cause my eyes on the score I do this for the nights that we slept on the floor Yes Thank you for having me, let's do it, y'all LeBeau, let's yeah. do it I want to thank you so much <laughs> You've been sitting down and talking to us a little bit Yes, we will, so absolutely Kendall will be sitting with us Then we're going to have Deline coming up after that uh, as well with Quindell. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's take a break. We'll we'll get get we'll some get some water. Yeah. We'll sit you right down. We'll chop it up. Thanks again. We'll be right back. I see. I see. It tastes so wonderfully. Wonderfully. And all that vitamin C. You're gonna love high C. There's enough high C for lunchtime and snack time with a high C nine pack. So pick up High C nine at a time and wrap up a great value in six great tasting High C flavors. Dum dooby doo wah. You're gonna love High C. Morning is your time. The earth wakes up with you. And always feel that spark of life in everything you do. Great nuts. For you, it's as natural as the morning. No sugar added, no preservatives, just an honest nutty crunch. Post Grape Nut Cereal. You know when you've got it good. Yes, you know when you've got it good. What are you doing, Inspector 12? Mm hmm. Comparing our new Haynes waistband with Fruit of the Loom trainee. Here, pull it. Men know our comfort weave waistband fits better. For one thing, it's stronger. Wow, is it? <laughs> now pull fruit of the looms, man. It's 
Hanes Winker. Of course. It's no contest. Oops. Hanes wins the Battle of the Bands. <laughs> That's why we put our name on it, kid. Hanes fits better than Fruit of the Loom. Can other long-distance companies offer you all AT&T can? Take a closer look. Wrong number? I'll credit you for that call. We'll set up an 800 number, so You can dial Rome directly. You can save by placing... Imagine long distance without all this. Only AT&T has such an extensive network of professionals who can answer questions and suggest ways you can save money. AT&T Long Distance. For over 100 years, when you reached out, we were there. And you can keep it that way. AT&T, the right choice. Red Lobster presents new seafood trios. One, two, three. Your favorites from the sea. Six new seafood trios, all irresistible. And with half of them priced at $6.95, it's just... One, two, three. Like broiled Boston bluefish, succulent scallops, and sizzling shrimp scampi in one delicious dish. And even a kid's trio at $1.95. One, two, three. Red Lobster, three from the sea. New seafood trios only for a few weeks, only at Red Lobster. From the four corners of the world, it's the Smurfs like you've never seen them before in an all-new Smurf movie. Smurf Rudy. Smurf Quest, coming Saturday morning. Oh, there's lasagna with ricotta, which I really love a lot of. Pizza with pepperoni, mozzarella, no bologna. A gorgeous thing, creamy chicken a la king. Weight Watchers has 23 entrees. That's more deliciousness than anybody else. 23 including chicken sweet and sour, southern fried or cacciatore, spaghetti, ravioli, hamesiti, macaroni, this filet or fish or gratin. Oh, now what have I forgotten? Weight Watchers. This is living. Skin is thickness, fat with flavor. Skin is skinny, that's the shape of skin is thickness. Fat with flavor. See how skinny, taste how fat. Only one gum gives you nine slim sticklets instead of seven wide ones in a regular pack. New sticklets in natural spearmint or peppermint. Skinny sticklets, fat with flavor. See how skinny, taste how fat. To see a two-hour movie, Going Ape. A hilarious comedy that will drive you bananas. Tony Danza, Jessica Walter, Danny DeVito are Going Ape Tuesday. Discover the wonder of this fall on NBC. Burger King introduces chicken tenders, real fillets of all white meat chicken breasts, not formed bits and pieces of chicken like McNuggets, real chicken fillets. And now get 25 chicken tenders in the party pack, a handy carrier that's great for picnics, perfect for parties, and new at Burger King. Okay, let's just say I'm standing right here, okay? I turn around. I walk right up, and I confront her. She says, yes, a white lie. She says, a white lie goes better with what I have on. When he says I do it on purpose, I say I don't. When he says I do it unconsciously, I say, I'm not doing it at all. I guess I lead him on, but it's not my fault. I wouldn't do it if he didn't follow. Some more cool weather on the way. Details on Nightcast. At Duracell, the race to be the best, to be the king of the road, goes on and on. Which is why today's copper top battery lasts up to 30% longer than the ones we made just two years ago. 30% longer. Today's copper top from Duracell. No battery lasts longer. Welcome to Hillshire Farm, where great taste is always at home. So you want to speed up the way we make our Hillshire Farm smoked sausage? Oh, yes, with high-speed equipment. Hold we on. Can, but... Young man, you can't rush great taste. We hand-select lean cuts of pork and beef and smoke them slowly, gently, for the taste that other sausage just can't beat. He's right. Try it yourself. Delicious. I wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> Hillshire Farm, for our best taste every time. Enjoy extra sugar-free gum. You get extra flavor, extra fun. Get extra sugar-free gum. Extra
Extra, the only leading sugar-free gum with NutraSweet, gives you extra refreshing flavor that lasts an extra, extra, extra long time. Wait, you got to record. Now you got to record. Hello, hello, hello. We are back live. It's Friday p.m. I'm Luigi Scarcelli. Uh, once again, I want to thank uh, Will Bradford for coming down here earlier. We got some more surprises in store, and I really want to thank Quindell. Thanks again, brother. Yeah, I appreciate you. Yeah, I know. I appreciate Definitely. it. And uh, so he performed a couple songs for us. Now we're going to talk a little bit about kind of uh, where you grew up, what got you in your journey Absolutely. to sitting here now. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of interesting. I was talking to the first guest, Will Bradford, mm -hmm. born in New York, I think. Yes. You're also born in New yeah, York. Yeah, born in Brooklyn. I, his story is very unique very to Very uniquely similar. Yeah, we right? kind of walked the same right, path right, somewhat. Right. Yeah. But it sounds like you lived in New York a little longer because yes. you really grew up there. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I left New York 18, 19. 18, 19. So you yes. went to high school in Brooklyn everything, and everything. Everything, yep. So we'll... We should talk about that, too, about the changing of Brooklyn, right? Because I think that could be an interesting story. Yeah, it's story. gentrified now. New York yeah. is different now. Right, right, New York right. home is different now. Yeah. But I love it. You know, I, I embrace change, so definitely. But And your family, some of them are still there. Your dad's here. My dad's here. Yep. Uh, a lot of my, like, my mom's side, my dad's side is still in Brooklyn. My mom moved upstate New York, like Utica, okay. and she had children, my siblings. I love y'all. If y'all watching this, I love y'all. They are, they're there, and I went to high school there. And, yeah, Utica is a small city. Pizza City, Italian City, but I love it. I love New York. I love, I love you to come out. Upstate New York. That love kind it, of love scene. it. Yeah, I mean, Brooklyn is, it's probably super expensive now, and right, it's all hipsters. And yes. It's coffee changed. shops and coffee uh, shops, and Yorkie, everybody walking around. Yeah, New York is very different, but I, yeah. I, I, you know, think the world is changing. The world is shifting. So, like, to see Brooklyn like that is kind of like, wow, I didn't think, you know, so. Yeah. You never thought it would happen. Nah, but it is, you know, it's shifting in the sense that it, it's like you said, uh, you know, let's, we talked to Quindell Smalls when he's, you know, 13 years old, yes. he's probably never going to say, oh, I, I end up seeing myself in Maine. You know, you probably thought that was the last thing on your mind. I didn't even know what it was. I knew the capital because we had a test with all the capitals of the states. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. how I knew we're Augusta. Augusta. But I didn't never see myself coming to Maine. Coming to Maine, right. Oh, sad. Maine's beautiful. Though. Maine's yeah, beautiful. and so once you get here, 2008, yes. uh, you feel like it's, it's changed your state of mind a little bit because we talked about Living in the city, yes. you know, it is. It's kind of like we're talking the Grandmaster Flash. Some, yes. Sometimes it makes me wonder. I keep from going under. It's so, uh, especially uh, New York, where, you know, you have 10 million people and probably like Manhattan or whatever. Just, and yeah. that's like 10 times more than all of Maine. Man, yeah, yeah. You Just, can't even breathe sometimes. It's yeah. not space. Yeah, someone right here, someone right here, 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 across right, from you. Right, right, yeah. you, you just, it's just no way to, just, you have to really outthink your surroundings. And to go, you know, and there's like a Central Park or something to get some nature, and that's Central not even that. Central Park. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I know, exactly. It doesn't sound like it. Back in the days, we always knew Central Park was a no-go after a certain time. We yeah. always knew, like, yeah, stay away from Central Park. Yeah, definitely. Well, right. yeah, I mean, that, that's a, I mean, that's a whole other can of worms right now that's where a... uh, Donald Trump just got arrested, and one of the guys in Central Park, do you know anything about the, the young African-American guys? Yes. And he ended up. The saying, he said, oh, these guys are definitely guilty. Turns out it was b BS. One of those guys <laughs> from that, he just uh, Twittered and said karma when Trump got arrested. Trump got arrested, huh? And so he said, That's look karma. at life. Yeah, look at life. Look at life. It goes right. all around in a circle. It does. So uh, so you get here 2008. Yep. But you'd been, uh, you said you'd started rapping when you were like, we've been, we been old. Yeah. yeah, so the funny thing about rapping, my dad wrote my first rhyme. Okay. But my mother and my granddad playing James Brown, my mother, Aretha Franklin, like Evelyn Champagne King, uh, she was big music. Mary J. Blige, big, big music, four CMDs. So, like, music has always been in my subconscious. And what actually made me, like, fall in love with hip-hop was Nas, If I Ruled the World. Nas, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I Ruled the World. So when I heard that, I'm like, it made me think, if I ruled the world. So I, and that opened that doorway to like musician, to being a musician. So Nas is the reason why. He was the reason. That's so and great. so does some of the music also that your mom listened to, does that influence you as well? Yes. I mean, was that, so that was like Mary J. Blige. Is there, <laughs> is there, what would you say is kind of, uh, I mean, is, this just sounds like a dumb question, but I mean, is, it, do, is there styles of rap? Do people have different styles? Yes. I mean, is yours a style that it's a certain type of flow? I mean, is mm -hmm. it more soul? What, yes. what do you think? Exactly. You, you nailed it right there with that. It's more about reality. 
okay. what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking. Right. You know, the worst part to me, the best part to me as a collective, though. Yeah. So the song is like the like a collective of a whole bunch of emotions. Right. So that's why I, I like that because I have those essences of that so that I don't just make raps. Hey, I just want to oh, look how cool I am. Look what I'm wearing. It's kind of like, hey, this is what I've been through. This is what I believe in. This right. is what I, this is my purpose. It's you not know? as superficial. No. Well, it was like when I was talking about different styles, I always think like all of a sudden I'm like, well, you know, Nelly is going to be different than Tupac, yes. right? Yep. Tupac's yep. going to be this California style. Yep. Yep. Nelly's kind of the down south, right? Yep. Remember that yep. kind of thing? Yep. Energetic. And, and then, you know, there's a lot of folks from Atlanta, too, like Master P back in the day Master and all that. Master P, New Orleans, yep, and, absolutely. And so then yours, your kind of style is New York with a little bit of Maine now. Yes, yes, too. absolutely. Yeah. Yep, the open-mindedness, a little more caring of things. You know, the one thing about, like, our nature, we didn't really care about, you know, mental health and relationships. We kind of just was like, whatever, you know. Yeah. Now I care about people. I care about how things grow and, you know, how to nurture things. So, yeah, Maine was, has... Yeah, was growing up in New York, was that uh, like a feeling like there, you know, I know Chicago and I know a lot of times when you're not sure that you're going to make it past a certain age, you're not thinking about what am I going to be doing when I'm 60 or 70. No, no, it's a constant. Think in the moment. Yeah, it's like a constant state of like anxiety, of uncertainty. You're like, you don't know what the, you know, and that's, I am just so grateful to be out that phase, to be in a much calmer, relaxed you know, planned out, like, phase of my life. Five, five, so five, that five, New York is, you know, everybody say the city that never sleeps because they're anxious. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know, that's the way to look at it. Well, and I was saying that, too, that I think it's there's a lot of sirens, it's noisy, you know, there's just something going on all the time. Yes. Whereas Maine, you have a little bit more time to breathe, to be able to relax and Oof, things. Uh, and, uh, like, tell me about some of your songs. Is yeah. there different things to know about those? Yeah, so, like, Complicated, one of the first one I performed, I wrote that literally like in the state of like my complicated life. This is the reason why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it for this. This is my purposes. I love my family. I'm I'm not per- I'm stressed out. You know, and that's why I wrote that in that state cuz I I don't want to be like the per- I'm so perfect. I want to show my flaws like hey, I'm human too, you know? Yeah, um the second one I perform um what's love? That is like it's basically like human nature. It's my it's my it's my kick my kickback to human nature like this is what love is. I don't want love. I don't even right. want to try anymore. Like, you know, yeah. so it's it's just basically just what I went through and how I'm thinking about things going forward from that point. And so that's a, it's a, it's a kind of a, I mean, I don't know if it's say a breakup song or something, but it sounds like you're saying it's a, it's a, you've been burned in some relationships and it's from the guy's perspective. Yes. Um, so you're kind of saying, uh, you know, what what is this and do I need it anymore? And, exactly. And exactly. maybe time for you to focus on yourself more yes, than always riddance. in relationships, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so let's talk a little bit about uh, you work with Lee. Uh, we've my had brother. them on the show and Tree Lock. My brother Lee Tree, I love y'all. You yeah. know my my brothers, right? That's family. Derek, bought me. that's Harold the MC. Shout out to y'all. Um, those guys made significant changes for me in my music career. I'm always going to give them guys they flowers when it's due. Absolutely, you as well. You as and well. they're and they that's part of the new rap scene in Maine. Yes, yeah. Yes, the now, the now, the now, yeah. the not the then, but the now and where it's going. We they have they we have they our hands on the culture. You know, we're not as big as we want to be, but as far as consistent effort. There's, there's no one even, there's no one even, it you, can you guys so, are just, yeah, you're, yes, grinding. you're grinding. And so, did you want to talk a little about your family? I know that you had yeah, some totally, di- yeah. difficult times in yeah, the past. Brief, but, yeah. But, you know, that's that's what makes us human. Yeah, yeah. Um, you lost your sister and you wanted to dedicate yeah. some time to yeah, her a little um, bit. Yeah, look, uh, my sister, it's, t- it's tough to talk about, man. My, my sister, my mom's second kid, uh, yeah, my sister had a tumor and the tumor just grew and uh, it's real tough, you know, and I, lo- I love her so much. She is the essence of being a big brother, responsibility, caring for someone other than yourself. Everything was taught from her. And I had other, my mom had other siblings, other children, and I learned, I got better with, as, as with yeah, more kids. Right. She was like my, you know, figuring it out, putting her in headlocks and doing wrestling moves yeah, on yeah, when we were yeah, younger, yeah, but yeah. I love her so much, and I tr- I do every I dedicate things to her um, every day. I think about her, so this is this is big for her, and that's a favorite color right there. So I'm happy to see that's that. Nice, she, that kind yeah, of she, yeah, she's smiling right well, now. Well, and also, uh, you, your dad, you'd said because you were on the New Year's show, your dad was watching. Uh, dad, if you're out there now, look at he made it. It's my pops, got, right there. That, I love my dad. 
Can I go to the camera? Yeah, here, right, right there, right yeah. There. Uh, so, but, and, and your dad is, is he, you know, 50s, 50, 50, yes. 60? That yes, kind of yeah, he was born 72, so you already ah, know. Same age as me, exactly. <laughs> he was born 72, shout out to my pops. He has been my big, my, my pops and my stepmother. Actually, today's my stepmother's birthday. Leslie, happy birthday. Sonny D, you know, I love you. Um, my dad has been my backbone. He's helped me out through so many, even my worst phases. He's been there for me, like. Hello, wake up. You're talented. So right, right. I want to give my dad his flowers, too. Thank you so much, Dad. I love you. You know, absolutely. Yeah, and tell me, like, what, what uh, is coming up. You're going to be doing yes. some things this summer? Yeah, yeah. so, um, yeah, so um, absolutely. So we have the BET Awards that we're doing. I'm doing a performance there. We oh, need yeah. some nominations. Um, this is, it's, it's, just, it's been surreal. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been working and submitting my music, and things have been happening and I just want to keep my foot on the pedal. You know right, what I'm saying? BT right, right. Awards. We have shows in June. Beyond the mic, bars over bars. We we taking the city by storm. Portland, Maine. We are here. And we're going to bring real original hip hop. And come out. Come support. I love it. And I think that the interesting thing is, is that I think, you know, it really culture-wise, it's close to where there could be a club fully dedicated. Please. Right now, you guys have a lot of, you're, you're at a lot of different places. You just need the... The right investors or, or different things. I mean, I think that's the next chapter. Um, we'll take a break. When we come back, uh, Quindell's going to be sticking with us, but we're also talking to a, a good friend of his and hopefully a good friend of the show, D-Line. And D-Line is going to tell us a little bit more about what she's doing. We're going to chat some more about just kind of what's going on these days. It, we're into the 10 o'clock hour. This is when we, you know, shoot the breeze, talk about whatever. So let's take a break. Uh, we'll be right back with you. This will be a fairly short break, so stick with us. Thanks yeah, a lot. Thanks a lot. What is the problem? The new machine is acting up. Up the bars are bigger. They bigger. are bigger. What do you suggest? Is your immediate supervisor. I didn't tell you the procedure. Call the boss. That's correct. You can only know how much he likes that machine. It's his baby. Rules are rules. Call the boss. Correct. You know, he dedicated that machine to his mother. I think you were on vacation. He loves her very much. Uh, any suggestions? Introducing Bigger Mounds and Bigger Almond Joy. The chocolate's bigger, the coconut's bigger, everything's bigger. My wife, I love her. I hate her. She can eat anything and not gain a pound. Now she's drinking my Diet 7-Up because this taste test proved it tastes better than the other leading diet drinks. Great. Now people who can drink anything are drinking all the Diet 7-Up. Is that fair? There'll be shortages, rationing. Want some ice cream, honey? No thanks, dear. I hate her. Only one taste is so good. Diet 7-Up. How to start an impressive family art collection. First, find some talented local artists. Then inspire them with Crayola Happy Meal boxes from McDonald's. Every Crayola Happy Meal comes with your children's favorite McDonald's foods, plus an art kit with a McDonald's land stencil and four Crayola crayons or a Crayola marker. There are four <laughs> sets in all, a different one each week. With Crayola Happy Meal boxes from McDonald's, it's easy to build a family art collection. After all, you already have the family art gallery. Excuse me, Daddy. Buddy Ebsen returns in a two-hour NBC family special. A young boy faces the challenge of his life to save his grandfather and their ranch. Stone Fox, Monday. Babies take your mark. One of these diapers keeps babies so dry... Get set. ...it'll take on any thick diaper. Go! It's drier than all of them. Ultra Pampers. Even when it's wet, it's dry. Because Ultra Pampers' thin lock-away core locks wetness away from baby. You can pour on wetness, but you can't squeeze it out. The winner over all thick diapers is Ultra Pampers. Even when they're wet, they're dry. The driest. Hey, what a plan for building a perfect cheeseburger. Start with cheese. Glorious cheese. A plank of Swiss over here. Ah, a perfect Swiss burger. Cut that cheddar for a bacon cheddar burger. Haul in the Monterey Jack. A perfect Mexican burger. To get your plans, hurry to your grocer's meat or dairy case and enter the Build a Perfect Cheeseburger sweepstakes. You could win a perfect patio and barbecue set. With real cheese, every cheeseburger you build will be... Perfect. A recent taste test proved that Diet 7-Up tastes better than the other leading diet drinks. Here, let me help you with this. <laughs> this news may dramatically increase demand. Here you are, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Unfortunately, to avoid a shortage of Diet 7-Up, people who may not really need it may be asked to limit their purchase. Freeze! Only one taste feels so good. 
Buy at 7-Up. I'd like you to try Rancher's Choice Dressing from Kraft. No, thanks. I like Hidden Valley. Oh, you're going to be tough. You're not kidding. You'll like Rancher's Choice even better. It's got lots of tasty herbs and spices. Oh, it's got lots of tasty herbs and spices. And it's incredibly thick and creamy. So it's incredibly thick and creamy. So why don't you try it? So I love it. Oh, my goodness, it's delicious. I love it. Rancher's Choice, also in reduced calorie. I love it. Hey everybody, we're back again. I hope you're enjoying these vintage commercials we're playing from the archives. Uh, so we talked to Quindell. He's still with us, but right now we're going to talk a little bit to Deline. Hi. Good to see you, Deline. Hi, um, so uh, you're, uh, first and foremost, you were born in uh, Sanford, Maine, right? I was, a, I was. Well, you were born in Maine somewhere. Yeah. No, I was no? adopted. So adopted, I was born okay. in Africa. Oh, okay. And then I was raised in Maine. Oh, interesting. Um, and I went to school in New Hampshire for a little bit, and then I can, and then I continued going to school, high school in Portland, Portland. at Earring. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you were born in a do you, what part of Africa were you born in? Do you, Liberia, Liberia. So West Africa. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and then you were adopted uh, from Mainer folks, kind of Mainers, or yes. were they? Yeah, they yep. weren't international themselves, no. or kind of small town Maine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So was that like a a, a culture? shock at all oh my or, gosh yeah, yeah yeah i came in through new york mm -hmm. okay um and the first thing yeah. i said was everyone smells like bread okay <laughs> that right, was right. the first thing i said i was yeah. seven years Wonder. old and i was like why does everything smell like bread it's weird <laughs> yeah um but it was it was it was very shocking because people didn't look like me right, right, right um i mean there was escalators elevators um Police officers. There was just so many things that were. It was just very overwhelming, especially right. being seven years old. I mean, seven. I'm, yeah, it was so, a lot. So, uh, was the fact that they smelled like bread in your mind? <laughs> well, was it a good thing? Like, oh, are they smelling like, or a bad thing? It depends what on a, bread, though. It depends I on what like kind that. of bread, right? I mean, if Does it's it bake? baked, oh, good, right, nice right, bread, right. Or brioche, <laughs> the yeah. is it a soft? No. Right, no. right, or just like <laughs> white bread. Uh, it's like dough. Yeah, uh, like dough. So, but your first seven years, you were, you were in Liberia. Do you, do you have fond memories of the time that you spent there? Yeah, yeah. those were my gangster days. I used yeah. to beat up little boys. Okay, I right, was right. a bad Tom boy, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Didn't like school. Yeah. <laughs> And and uh, is Liberia like Central Africa or it's is West, it West, Western Africa? Like, what's the population? I know some countries in Africa have a, t a lot, and some people, some are very small. Yeah, I'm not sure right? you know how some, much because right. I was so young when I came, but I know it's a pretty big population. The, uh, one more question about Liberia. I don't want to, <laughs> but uh, do you still uh, do you yeah. keep in touch or know who yep. your folks were there? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mom, sister, dad. Yep, yeah. Everybody. From in Liberia. Yeah. Oh, okay. Facetime. And but you're also close with your adoptive parents here mm -hmm. too, yeah. Yeah. And do you have siblings here? No biological siblings, but yeah. I have six other adopted adopted siblings, siblings. From various countries: China, Guatemala. That's very cool. Okay. It was a mixed bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That Child would be mix. yeah a really interesting That's upbringing. Yeah. And yeah. and and that was and so then you went to Deering, but yeah, you were still living in in but you were living in Portland then downtown. So I or? was living in Sanford and. Um, we had, I was going to a school in New Hampshire, St. Thomas Aquinas, and then it was a lot. It was a private school, so it was a lot. So I wanted to go to a more diverse school. So I talked to my parents, and they were like, um, what about Deering? And we, well, we first talked about Casco Bay, then we talked about Portland High School, and then we were like, we chose Deering. Um, and they let me come from Sanford. So I drove from Sanford every yeah. day, right. which is like an hour, every day to school. That's a long exactly. commute. Right. Every yeah. single day. Well, and so was that, because that's an interesting question, too, is that what was the reasoning that you had that you, you really wanted to pick the campus life of Deering more than the, the yeah. in-town life of Port Portland High is very, yeah, yeah. if you want to be right yeah. in town, yeah. and, and like but it, it, Deering seems to be more of a campus yeah. almost. Yeah. More things, yeah. And the teachers were, when we went in to kind of like meet with each school, we went to Casco. And no, nothing is gets Casco anyone. Is Casco the one that's a little more kind of artistic? Artsy, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Um, during the teachers were just so accommodated. Like, they were so accommodating. You know what I'm saying? They, they understood the situation. And they were just, like, so welcoming. And we felt right at home when we got there. Like, my mom and I were like, yeah. This is this is this it. is the place. <laughs> this yeah. is the place. This and is so, it. Were you, you were there for four years at Deering? Um, three, because I did one years. year one in St. Thomas. Yeah. And and so you graduated, and then 
Uh, was that when you got into singing and, and the music side of things, or was that before that? Or um, Well, when I was talking to my mom in Africa, she said you were always singing. Yeah, so yeah. when I was little, I just always sing all the time. I believe that. Yeah. 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 And then, um, you know, even when I was younger, I, was, I would when I came to the U.S., I would sing all the time. Grocery stores, people would come up to my mom like, oh, my God. She can really sing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I would get shy. Right. <laughs> they said it just like that too. Just right? like she can really sing. Oh I like my God. It. Um. So I did chorus, of course, in school. I was in chamber choir. You know, I did plays and stuff. Um. I did a lot of. Um. I did Maine's Got Talent. Yeah. Um. I won second place, which is really cool. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I've done Second a lot place of that Maine's Got Talent. Yeah, wow, that's it's, great. And I got yeah. a cash prize too. So. That's awesome. And <laughs> you didn't even let me hold it. <laughs> yeah. And you didn't let me hold it. Right. And you were singing. Yes. Yeah. Those okay. Were singing. Yep. And was that with a like a, a backing track versus doing it with like a band or something? Yeah, say? it was yeah. a backing track. Yeah. And so Maine's got was that a couple years ago or? Yeah, they yeah. still they they're still doing they're it. They're nonprofit. They um oh, okay. yeah. They okay. still do it to this day. Yeah. Charity, I think maybe yeah. to raise money. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's cool. And so. Uh, let's talk about how you guys met. I, it sounded like you guys met in a very interesting way. Did you want to tell about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we met in a very similar fashion. There was a, what was an acting, singing audition? What was it? It was for acting, singing, yeah, dancing, any type of talent right. you had. Right. It was at the Sheraton, and it was kind of like it was kind of cringy at first. Yeah. <laughs> but like she was one of the people that stood out because she just had this real like Broadway like yeah. vocal ability. I'm like, oh, I need her on a yeah. track. Right. 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 Mind you, this is like December 2019, so it's been a while. Um, I even went with her. Oh, she went to Berkeley College, and she did like she went there to like audition. We went mm -hmm. there. Yeah. She's so. like she. This is why I wanted her because she. Is an amazing artist. So you went to Thank Berkeley you. for singing. Vocal, I, auditioned. Yeah. I auditioned. I auditioned. Okay, auditioned. auditioned mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. that's. But and and have you guys worked together on any tracks yet? Yes. You have. Yes. Okay. And yeah. we're currently we're going to be releasing a new song. Yes. Okay. Okay. Hopefully tomorrow. Yes. Um, tomorrow drops tomorrow. Yes. Like Missy, it's going to be. It's so good. It's, it's so high, good. Energy. high energy. It's very high energy. Yep. That's cool that we're yeah. the first to tell you guys that that'll be yeah. dropping tomorrow. Woo. So I mean, that's the question. Uh, I mean, how do people find that? Are they going to find this on iTunes, on Spotify? Everywhere. I mean, It'll be so, everywhere. All platforms. All platforms. But, all platform. but they should be looking up Quindell or also looking up D-Line. Yep. And it'll be on both of them. Yep, it'll be on both. Because this is a duet. Yep. It'll be yep. on each yep. of you guys. That's correct. Yep. And so uh, how many tracks do you guys usually uh, kind of duet on versus, like, doing your own things? Like, Well, so we, I'll be honest with you, we've had a lot of – Almost there, cause she Almost she, there, go, so she go to she go to Atlanta. I travel I mean, a lot. You know, travel, yeah. She travel. She go sure. places, and I have you know things going on with my life. But like she's here now, we're here now. We put in the pedal to the metal. Yeah. Right. This record is going to be high energy, and this, it's going to be yeah. a lot to follow. And yeah. it's but it's it's the single, or you'll have a. Few it's a songs. single. This yeah. one's a single, and yeah. then we're going to keep working on okay. more projects together. Yeah. And uh, who who is it who kind of makes the, some of the beats for you guys? Do you do that yourself, or do you have other guys that do those kind of things? So we gotta buy beats, you know. We look yeah. at do them, beats, yeah. The active active producers, we yeah. buy beats. It's whatever high. I like to go. We like to go with what we feel. Yeah, it's all about feeling. It's yeah. so about the feel. Okay. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. So we wanna feel it, and if it's right, it's hot. We gonna rock out. Thank so you. there's a, there's like a, you could find a real like a genius producer. And you mm -hmm. get the beats from them, and yep. they'll help mix it for you, and mm -hmm. then you put that all together, yep. right? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, what's upcoming for you coming up? Do you have any things that you're um, about? outside of? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, uh, we, yeah, you can tell me more about that <laughs> too. Yeah, but. Um, I'm gonna have. I'm definitely. I want to try to be able to do. I want to be able to rap, and I want to be able to sing. Yeah. As a career, okay. both That's of it. them together. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, you know. Try singing, because singing is my first passion. Singing is what naturally comes. Rapping, I've had to learn. People have had to teach me. I've had to learn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it doesn't come as natural to me as singing. Singing is just, I could just, you know Absolutely. what I'm saying? So I'm, I definitely, I have some um, songs I'm going to release that are me, just me singing. Just, singing. just me. Yep. And then I'm going to have other raps come out that I'll try to feature other artists. Because I love all the artists in Maine, and I want to be able to feature people on stuff so that they can get yes. attention and stuff. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Kind of share, and share, collab collaborate and, a little bit. Yeah, and make connections. Yeah. Yep. That's well, we have, uh, I want to always remind our audience that we have uh, upcoming, uh, the Tuesday after this next Tuesday, April 11th and 12th, we'll be going live with our main uh, idol karaoke. Yeah. And it, it's we have some people from uh, Champions of Biddeford. We also have people from Erickson Wyndham. 
uh, a panel of celebrity judges. Ooh. Wow. And, and, uh, and they'll come Ooh. in and they'll do some songs from some famous people. Uh, I would love to have you come on there. And, yeah, and absolutely. You don't necessarily, if you want to compete, you can compete. But if you just want to come on and, and be a featured artist to play yeah, some songs, that would be, be awesome. great. Because I know that's what you're saying. You feel a little more comfortable with that right. than the rapping. Is this, is, is on, on the song Missy, mm -hmm. like are this, you yep. singing or are you rapping on this one? I'm rapping on this one. You're rapping on this yep. one. So that's why. For you, the singing is your wheelhouse a lot of times. Yeah, that's more. my power. That's yeah, my that's the, yep. that's, the, that's the ace in the deck. That's yes. the ace in the deck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. And uh, what else are some interesting things that you've been seeing going on culture wise? Anything in fun? In Portland? Yeah, in Portland. I actually just came back. I was living in Atlanta for two years. Oh, okay. So I just came back to Maine because yeah. mm -hmm. I left Maine for a little bit. But I'm noticing so many artists. And I know you were talking earlier with your last um, guest earlier yeah. about. All the, all the talented people in Portland and just being able to find that space for them to be able right. to get their music out. Exactly. And yeah. that's, it's difficult as a young artist to be able to just, because if you're in New York yeah. or Cali or Atlanta, it's a lot easier. You have a bigger audience. You mm -hmm. have, you know, so many more opportunities. In Portland, it's dots. very hard to find opportunities. I you know agree. what I'm saying? And it, it's, it's a mixed bag always because in one sense, it's easier in Portland easier i mean it it's there's less competition and it, you could be a bigger fish in a smaller pond right. Right. whereas if you go to like uh you know new york or whichever mm -hmm. there it's a it's yeah. a big world out exactly. there but there's a lot more place to cut your teeth right. and you know exactly. and all of that yes. whereas here i agree i mean it's harder to get things started so that's a question for you what was going on in atlanta i know i have yeah. a friend of mine who's an actor, he's just in a movie we did, Downey's Christmas. Oh, wow. Uh, shout out to Cody Curtis. Cody is a, 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 a white guy, pretty <laughs> vanilla guy. Uh, he's an actor. <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's, well, he's, and he's, he's, a, he's funny and he's an actor. And, and, a, and I, think, I think he might be the perfect guy to be in the Atlanta kind of African-American type of comedy right. as like the, the guy, like he looks like he, kind of like a David Spade kind of guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and yeah, so yeah. he could be like the guy mm -hmm. who's there. And uh, Cody, if you're watching, I know he always, <laughs> he wants to be a leading man, but he was, in, he was in a comedy and he was great in it. Yeah. And so he's going out there to act, but you were out there doing more on the music. music side. Yeah. 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 So tell me about Atlanta. Atlanta is, like you said, it's very, everyone's, like crabs in a barrel. Everyone's yes. trying to climb up and right, no matter right. what, everyone's trying to get up. Yep. So I I left not because the music scene wasn't good, it was amazing, but I left because as we know, prices are so high. Yeah. So rent yeah. is twelve hundred but minimum wage is seven dollars an hour. There's yeah. no possible way you can do that and then make that extra time to how do is, music. How, I, how? <laughs> so yeah. it was just and I was I was like, you know, I want to be able to stay here and do music, you know, cause so many opportunities, but it's like also, I can't live out here. When know? it's that expensive, it's right? It's too expensive. It is, it yeah. is a match. Yeah. 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 pieces that don't fit in the puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, how are you going to do right. that? I'm like, what? Yeah. No, yeah. I agree. And, and we talked about that's New York mm -hmm. is the yeah. same way. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, you know, Portland's getting to be the same way, too, in a lot I of know. ways, Absolutely. right? Everyone's yes. moving back home. Everybody's moving back. <laughs> yeah, moving yeah. back. Yes. Right. It's hard. Co was COVID hard for you? Did that slow down any of the progress, or were you were you out there? I think you I said? wasn't there then. You weren't I was there. Still in Maine. So you were in Maine. COVID. You went out after after COVID. Okay, yeah. Because it's I mean COVID was a long time ago in a lot yeah. of ways when it started. Yeah. I mean now yeah. it's already almost getting towards twenty four, yeah. and yeah. that stuff started in two thousand nineteen. Mm, Pretty soon yeah. it would wow. be looking at where it's like five yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a wild. It was serious. That couple of years, it really it, it slowed down the progress on on a lot of things, um, but now you're back here. Are you in a Portland area? Or? Yep, yeah, Falmouth. Falmouth. Yep, okay. I'm staying with nice. my friend. Yep. Staying with your friend. Nice. And uh, they were talking about. Do you know Angelica? You ever met Angelica Ferre? I have. She's an upcoming artist. She's oh, actually yes. her parents are from Africa. Oh, uh, wow. And she lives in, she grew up in Falmouth. I do know Angelica, I'm sorry, yes. I apologize. Yeah, I with like an yes, age, Yes, I actually right. do, yeah, yep. yeah. We're similar ages, And yep. she's in Falmouth too. She plays with them a lot. She's strictly singing, yep. soul singing, mm -hmm. I think, kind of thing. Um, so Falmouth, and, and do you get to, do you, do you go out a lot or do you kind of stay hanging out um, if you're not playing? I just got back, like yeah, a yeah, month ago. Yeah, you just got back, yeah, okay. But, um, like he said, we have a lot of big ideas. We have yes. a lot of big plans. We want to try to bring happen. artists together and yeah. give artists a chance to be able to yes. perform their craft and yeah, blossom, and know? just make it like right. the culture. Just yeah. make it full and diverse yeah. and 
things. Yeah. Because th- and, and to piggyback off what you said, things are kind of like clicky. Okay. People don't mess with people for reasons that they right. don't even really have. Which right, takes right, away right. from the like, music. Hey, yeah. we can really we can do it together. You right. know, yeah. like you might make it for other reasons. I might make it for similar reasons. Right. But we just collaborate exactly. and make this happen. But once the minds start changing, I think things are growing. Things are growing in. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do for the show was, and we're still working on it uh, as the idea where uh, a lot of kind of different artists will come and jam. Yeah. So it might be somebody like who comes in and they say, you know, I'm playing and I'm bringing in another guy like Unique Unknown was on last oh, week, yeah. and he did an hour long <laughs> set. He did his whole oh, set. Oh wow. And uh, yeah, he's dope. and he had a. Uh, do you know Melvin Gratis? He's a guy from Miami, and he plays electric guitar, and so he sat in. And they did a little bit of that. And that's the idea is if you can get these like impromptu jam sessions like yep. they do at the the uh, the 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 music awards. What's the right. what's the what's the one where it's the where if you get in the Hall of Fame of remember the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And yeah, on that right they'll have cool. all these people, you know, Rolling Stones playing mm-hmm. with uh, Prince, playing Prince, with yep. so and so. Right. And and a lot of people whoever's nominated that year will jam on stage. Jam on stage. Bob Dylan yeah. playing that's with so cool. and, Wow. And Bob that's what, Dylan. you know, playing with like, you know, Tupac or whatever back in the day. <laughs> Who knows, right? I, okay, but they, they would always have a lot of different folks. So we're trying to do that with this show is, yeah. is, is blend more. I love yeah. that. And, and I, you know, I see your guys' styles is and because you are already kind of doing rock and roll type right. of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. Would you say that the, the, the non-rap, is that more R&B? Is that, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and I would say R and B and soul, yeah, 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 yeah. and maybe Absolutely. pop. R and B, soul, pop, yeah. Yep. Soul, Depending soul, on the mood. And the is mood. that <laughs> yeah. is Atlanta the best place a lot of times for that? Atlanta's got a real southern, yeah, yeah it's really good soul, good. yeah. yeah. Yep. Good producers there yeah, and everything. A-pop. Everybody. I mean, Cardi B has a house out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, my ex actually met Ti just walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ti yeah. um, was in McDonough. Yeah, and that's like a nicer part of town. Right, right. But yeah, um, yeah. he actually's like saw him walking. Yeah. So there's, I mean, Tyler Perry has a house out there. I mean, right. He's t- big Tyler there. Perry yeah. Studios yeah. is yeah. out there. He's got so I mean, studio there's a lot there. of yeah. people. He brought a lot of people. Yeah, that are out there. Well, it's it's kind of a uh, for. For a lot of the you know African American folks, mm-hmm. they call it the Black Hollywood. Exactly, mm-hmm. it's it's because you know Hollywood. I lived in Beverly Hills for a while, oh. uh, and I was doing that because I have a film degree, and I was a background guy and millions of things. But yeah, I mean Hollywood is still, you know, they they've only gotten <laughs> their diversity yeah. now. Yeah. Um, but the people that live in Beverly Hills, mm-hmm. I mean, it's still yeah. pretty, pretty, uh, Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills, <laughs> I mean, you've seen, Beverly Hills-y. you've seen those shows, like yeah. the Beverly Hills 90210, all the way to the Housewives, reality shows, yeah. yeah, the Housewives, mm-hmm. I mean, it's very plastic, it's a different scene, yeah, um, well, listen, guys, I really appreciate you coming yes. down Thank here, you. Uh, yes. but tell, I want to make sure you tell the audience, how can they find you guys online and get the, all of the stuff, tell us, Am I here? Camera's going to be over here. Like, yep. I'm over here. Yep. Like, um, follow me on Instagram, the underscore official underscore Deline underscore. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> um, and on, um, I'm sorry, on Apple Music, it's just the official Deline everywhere, the official Deline. YouTube, the official Deline. Made it simple. Yes. And a Quindell. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Quindell Smalls. Uh, my YouTube is my YouTube is is the same thing. Uh, Instagram is King Quizo Small. You can find me over there. Twitter as well. Um, I look forward to hearing from y'all. Let's collaborate. Let's make it happen. Yeah. I want to thank these guys, and I want to thank you guys for being Woo! here. We're sticking around. We're going to go to one more commercial break. I'll come back. We'll kind of start wrapping up now that we're getting towards 11. Towards but 11. I want to thank oh you guys goodness. so much for being here. <laughs> thank Thanks again. Thank you. It was thank great you talking so to you. Uh, we'll be right back. Thanks. <laughs> This morning, you've got time for a hot home-cooked breakfast. Are you kidding? Great Start's frozen breakfast sandwiches, fresh whole eggs, sausage, and cheese on a buttermilk biscuit. Are you kidding? Delicious and piping hot in only three microwave minutes. Great Start's from Swanson has a whole line of breakfasts you've got time for. No kidding. Sam, comb your hair. I just did. Sam, your hair. 
I'm always combing my hair. Then try this, new Johnson's Gentle Conditioning Shampoo. Why? You're growing up, so's your hair. Oh. Johnson's new shampoo cleans and conditions gently, the no more tears way. Why? To help control your hair. Not like that. Damn, you combed your hair. New Johnson's Gentle Conditioning Shampoo and for detangling, new Johnson's Conditioner, the hair care pair for kids from Johnson & Johnson. There are two ways to get rid of a smelly chair. Throw it out or use Lysol spray. Get rid of the garbage can or use Lysol. Ordinary air fresheners just cover odors. Lysol kills germs on surfaces, cleans the air. So laugh. Shoot, Lysol spray actually cleans the air. Tuesday, Timmy had a fever. Yeah, and I didn't feel so good. The doctor recommended Children's Panadol. Because I'm a children. Children's Panadol. Aspirin-free, alcohol-free, sugar-free. With the kind of relief pediatricians recommend. Its original fever-breaking formula set a new standard for safety. I feel better now. See? I don't clean anymore. Because none of these ordinary cleaners gives me what I want. Now I clean and disinfect with Lysol deodorizing cleaner. Look, Lysol not only cleans the greasiest dirt, it disinfects. Lemon Fresh Lysol Cleaner takes cleaning one step further. Mm. Ham and cheese. Pizza, please. Barbecue. It's for you. The crispy hot meal without a big deal. Hot pocket hair. Tonight. Talking pool party. <laughs> the few. Stink bombs. What? The proud. The Brad Patrol. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Then, he said he was going to kill her. Get in my car. But what he did was worse. Based on the horrifying true story, Easy Prey, parental discretion is advised. Tonight, starting at 7 on Channel 7. The first electric power station in the country also helped start Fiji and E. Two of its first customers were Mr. Hastings and Mr. Andrews. All this depended on a little technology. And a lot of personal service. The technology has grown since then. Someday, we'll light this whole side of the street. And so is the service. Today, PG&E provides electricity for hundreds of California communities. And we use dozens of different power plants to do it. So every customer gets the same attention as the first two. The trouble with most supermarkets is sooner or later you have to check out. Are you moving? <laughs> I'm not moving. Are you moving? I'm not moving. Are you moving? Do I look like I'm moving? Only at Lucky can you use your own ATM bank card in our easy checkout instead of cash or checks. So to check out quickly and easily, come into Lucky. Shop anyplace else. Are you moving? And it could take forever. The Lucky Easy Checkout. We think you've waited long enough. Feast your eyes on new Bunt Brand Pineapple Cream Cake. You caught my yourself in the embrace of creamy filling and tangy pineapple topping only in a bun brand cake mix i've got a passion for you pillsbury desserts with a passion <laughs> all you got to do is think refreshment and you can move that can right into your hand come on concentrate nothing think harder think big refreshment
Diet Pepsi. Hi. The taste that generations ahead. Big cheeses have more cheeses. Big cheeses have more cheeses. Big cheeses have more for you to love. It's a triple taste treat that can't be beat. Yay! Burger King introduces the Big Cheese, Swiss Jack and American on a flame broiled burger. There is more for you to love. Cause we do it like you to do it at Burger King. Most hot dogs. Hey, everybody. It's that time of the show where it's kind of the free-for-all. Uh, we had a great time with Will Bradford. I want to thank him once again. Once again, I can't say it enough. You should go see the Army Fest August 4th and 5th. Get tickets there. Camp out there. Have a good time. We hope to be there covering it ourselves. I also want to thank Quindell Smalls and DeLine. Uh, some really interesting stuff there, talking to them. Uh, so we've been having a great show. Right now, uh, I wanted to do a little segment with my friend Warren, who is, I guess he would call himself a millennial, and we're going to take a look at some trailers, classic movies from the 80s, and talk a little bit about them with the remaining minutes that we have. So the first one coming up is Mr. Mom, a classic movie about the changing gender roles in the 80s with Michael Keaton. So let's take a look at that. We'll come back. We'll talk a little about his thoughts on it. Thank you. Meet Dad. He's a real man. Got a beer? Seven o'clock in the morning. Scotch? An all out go getter. But when his job pulled the plug on him, I'm fine. You son of a dude! Yeah. Okay. They threw a switch. Go, yeah. okay. Good luck. And he became the lady of the house. Ah. It sure looks like he got a terrific deal. Honey, if you call and I'm not here, I'll be at the gym or at the gun club. Exercise. And relaxation. Good home cooking. Arts and crafts. Kenny! Don't paint your sister! And fun and games with the neighbors. Are these any good? We've got two pair. We've got plenty. That's when he was forced to face the bare facts. Huh? His new job is a mother. Michael Keaton. Where's Bobby? Keep the extra diapers. And Terry Garr in Mr. Mop, a mother of a comedy. So that was Mr. Mom, an early 80s movie, Michael Keaton. Uh, Warren is watching it at home, so he's on that same delay that a lot of people are, where he'll be back with us very shortly after he finishes watching it at home. Uh, it's an interesting movie uh, because it's definitely about the changing gender roles at the time, where Terry Garr is in the workforce. Uh, her husband, Michael Keaton, loses his job and has to be a stay-at-home dad. So I find it to be an interesting movie because it's very much what happened a lot in the 80s. Uh, my folks both worked, but the changing roles happen quite often. So I find it to be interesting. I think that when we get a chance to have Warren back. I'm back now, Louis. Did How you, it goes then? Good. Did you see the film trailer, Warren? I, I did see the trailer of the film, Luigi. This is quite an interesting film. Where, where do you uh, come up with or find these things, Luigi? Come on, then. Well, the Mr. Mom was a huge hit. It was actually, so it's like, it's kind of funny where you see certain actors like uh, yeah. a Jim Carrey. He has one or two of these. The Mask was his hit and Ace Ventura. This was where Michael Keaton really broke out big. It was Mr. Mom. He had a couple other films, and that was where he broke out. But does that resonate with you, Warren, the idea of weren't you part of the thing where your dad was a stay-home dad, actually, at a radio show, correct? Well, that's right. My dad, many people will know that, he was home dad, a guy who had a radio show, later a television show. But he made his entire identity around uh, you know, staying at home and, and, and taking care of the kids, which is really interesting, especially, you know, 
during the time that he did that in. But I think, you know, what we're seeing now in today's world is a lot more people are doing that. And it's a much more dynamic space than it used to be. But it's definitely interesting seeing this movie from the 1980s exploring those gender roles like that. And is this now a movie that you think you might find on Netflix or somewhere else and check it out? It's very funny. I was about to say, where, where, can, I, uh, where can I stream this movie? I, w- I would guess you can stream it at Netflix, uh, probably Amazon. It might even, at that, at that type of an older film like that, it might be on YouTube where you can watch it for free. But it's definitely an 80s classic movie. And what Warren is seeing is that even back then, It was very much in the pioneer days of the man was now not always the guy who's coming home from work and his wife has the apple pie and everything like that. And and I think movies were recognizing that and starting to kind of show that. Uh, The next film that we have a trailer of, I think you guys are going to get a real kick out of, uh, the log line of the movie Tootsie with Dustin Hoffman starring in it. Dustin Hoffman... He had to become a woman to become a better man. It's quite a movie. It won the Oscar for Best Writing. I think it was 1980. Don't quote me. It might have been 82. But let's put on the, uh, the trailer for Tootsie and see what Warren thinks of that film. So while we're waiting for Warren to check that out on his delay as the millennial... Uh, I think Tootsie was a very interesting film because it was, it was kind of talking about early uh, transgender uh, roles, which seems to be uh, still shockingly controversial to some people in the parts of this country. Uh, but at the time, that was where Dustin Hoffman, because of his chauvinistic behavior, couldn't get any jobs in New York as an actor, so he had to dress in drag and become Tootsie. Uh, who become went, a woman. Dressed like a woman who then got these roles, and it's, it's, it's outrageously funny. It was a great uh, best writing at that year. You happen to have seen the trailer now, Warren. What was your thoughts, my friend? I did, and actually, before I jump into Tootsie, I actually want to tell all of our viewers at home that Mark J. Poker, the host of Release Date Rewind, which can be watched on PMC Channel 5. You can catch it on demand at pmcwatch.com. He does incredible uh, in-depth conversations with friends about movies from our past. Uh, he did a two-post series on Tootsie, which I encourage all of you to go watch. PortlandMedia.org slash release date. It's an incredible in-depth conversation they did. But definitely a really interesting movie, diving into really interesting topics of the time. Things that, you know, back in the 1980s, you know, the whole, you know, LGBTQ plus whatever movement was still this very much underground type thing where you could be persecuted for, you know, e- even talking about something like transgenderism or things like that. And I think it was really interesting for a movie of that time to, to be all about that. Yeah, I mean, that was and it was a, an interesting way to kind of have that as a film that it, it really touched on a lot of those themes. It was ahead of its time. Uh, and I also would reiterate, Mark J. Parker is a valued uh, contributor here to uh, Portland Media Channel, uh, Portland, Portland Media, Media Center, Center PMC at, PMC, at pmcwatch.com. Uh, he has his release date rewind. It was earlier tonight, uh, reviewing classic films of his childhood, like League of Their Own, Scream. Uh, the list goes on and on. He's great. Uh, so what we will do is, while we have time, we will watch another film, actually, of that time, and this is called Arthur. Arthur was remade with Russell Brand uh, several years ago. It was not too great. But the original uh, movie, Arthur, with the great Dudley Moore, uh, was an awesome movie. I think this was, again, early, early 80s. Had a hit single, uh, Moon in New York City by Christopher Cross. Great stuff. Liza Minnelli is in it. But Dudley Moore is a hoot. So let's take a look at Arthur, and we'll come back and see what uh, Warren has to say about Arthur, the film. Don't you wish you were Arthur? Would the more attractive of you please step forward? (laughs) Gonna cost you $100. Let's make it $200, but I will ask you to simonize my card. (laughs) 
How rich are you? I wish I had a dime for every dime I have. <laughs> Anticipating your condition, and I brought you orange juice, coffee, and aspirins. Or do you need to throw up? Is this your wife like that? I'm not married. Keep smiling. Six, eight, eight, five, five, four, nine. Usually one must go to a bowling alley to meet a woman of your stature. I take it this bum will be calling you. Dad, he's a millionaire. You have my permission to marry him. <laughs> Are you a hooker? I forgot. Oh, I just thought I was doing great with you. <laughs> Will you take my hand? That would leave you with one. <laughs> I'm gonna take my coat. You don't have a coat. Well, I'm gonna take my tie. <laughs> You're a rich one. How does it feel to have all that money? It feels great. <laughs> A dumb question. What's so funny now? I sometimes just think funny things. What do you do for a living? I race cars, I play tennis, I fondle women, but I have weekends off and I am my own boss. Dudley Moore is Arthur. <laughs> don't you wish you were me? I don't know, I do. Don't you wish you were Arthur? <laughs> Arthur, the most fun money can buy. And Orion Pictures release through Warner Brothers. So that is Arthur, uh, a film that it's kind of like when it was funny to be an alcoholic. Dudley Moore did a great job with that. I think he actually had two more sequels to it. Uh, great time, great guy, uh, really interesting, uh, romanticized version of New York. The kind of uh, Cinderella again, where she's a kind of a regular girl and she meets him. Uh, it is an interesting story because it does deal with things like uh, she loves him. He's a great guy, but he is kind of a drunk, as you can see throughout that trailer. So it's an interesting. I don't think it would fly too well, although Russell Brand tried to do it a few years ago. Uh, I don't think it did that well. It probably should have been left as it was as an early 80s gem. But in a few seconds, we're probably going to hear what, what Warren has to say about a movie like that. That's right. Well, no, it's definitely a really interesting uh, movie. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, it's definitely glamour. You know, it's you know, it's the glamification of, of, of alcohol. You, you know, you, you you ever hear the classic phrase? You know, we need to re-glamorize smoking and stuff like that from the old movies where everyone was smoking away and it was this really glamorous thing. Yeah. You, you, you ever hear that argument? Yeah, yeah, and that was it. Well, you know, watching a trailer for something like that makes me think, you know, maybe we should re-glamorize a lot of that stuff because it's really nostalgic. It brings you back to that time, that date and time, and, you know, to the, the, the classic drunk and the classic smoker. It really re-glamorizes all that stuff. And, of course, you know, I don't mean any of this literally, but, you know, you're really going back in time. You're really looking at, you know, the state of things back then. I think that looks like a wonderful movie, something that I would definitely watch. Well, it was the, the idea that, in those days, and you know, we have let's all be honest. It was the idea that in those days, and even to to this day, in some ways, it's quite a life when you can be the guy who's rich and drinks and has fun and all that. But let's. I, I know we're running out of time. I have one more trailer for you. Michael J. Fox, the indimitable Michael J. Fox, the best guy going. This isn't Back to the Future. This is a movie that's a classic. Before I, well, maybe after. Uh, it's called The Secret to My Success, and I want to play that for you before we run out of time. So let's cue that up. So what I loved about this Michael J. Fox movie was it has that song, Walking on Sunshine, Katrina and the Waves. Everybody knows it. it's very upbeat, but it's also a very interesting, subtle treatise on, like, he gets one over on the corporate overlords. He's kind of a small town guy working in the mailroom. He tricks all of the top people in, because they're not that smart. So it does have a very uh, working man, uh, anti-capitalist type of flavor to it with a fun Michael J. Fox style to it. I love that movie. You should definitely look at that. I can guarantee you can find that one on YouTube. Maybe it's Netflix, maybe Amazon. Pretty quickly in our remaining minute or two, Warren's going to be right back with us to tell you his That's thoughts. Right. Did you, do you know who Michael J. Fox is, Warren? I do know who Michael J. Fox yes. is, and I think that looks like an amazing movie. Very funny. It was a lot of fun. He did a great job. I'd like to talk more about it, but I also know we're getting close to being out of time, and I know 
you wanted to that. you wanted to talk about what's new and upcoming at uh, PMC in the next uh, minute minute and a half that we have. That's right. No, so Luigi, you know, wonderful job tonight, Friday PM. Definitely one of our flagship shows that we air Thank you. every Friday night from nine to eleven. You know, yes. mark that on your calendar. You can watch reruns of Friday PM on PMCWatch.com, on YouTube. Um, but definitely, you know, we've just launched new shows on PMC Watch, channels five and two. No longer nonsense on channel two. We've got some really good shows coming up, some live shows. The InfoWars Network is on. We've got the American Journal, the War Room, some major heavy-hitting shows. Right after this, we actually go to the Info Network for a couple hours, then Limitless Wrestling's right after that. So I encourage everyone to stick around. And, we, and thank you. You ran it right to it. We're going to run the end credits if we got a chance. Uh, and that sounds like it's coming up in about five seconds. Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate you staying with us. And I want to thank uh, Quindell and Will again. And thanks again. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.